Good morning. <laughs> I think it's good. <laughs> I'm going to um, give you a little bit of the history as I know it of uh, the institutions and the department since I came. When uh, I came in 1961, there was a main hospital campus, of course, which included uh, pathology. Thank you. Okay. Uh, the pathology, uh, the first pathology building burned down and it was rebuilt in 1923 and remains pretty much uh, as it is today uh, with a few renovations here and there. The Children's Center was under construction when I came. There was a basic science building, a Hunterian building, and the School of Hygiene main building. There was no radiological science building. Sheep grazed on that site. There was a Hampton House, and Sinai Hospital was located where the Turner Auditorium is now. They moved out uh, further out, as you know. We've had uh, five department chairs, and um, Ivan Bennett was the first chair, and Ivan Bennett was not a pathologist. He was, uh, he came from the Department of Medicine, and I don't know why he was selected for this position, but he was. <laughs> and um, he came in 1958, and uh, he was, um, uh, he was an infectious disease expert, and he was set up probably the first lab, research lab that I'm aware of, on the first floor of the pathology building, and he got his casework from Sears. He used Sears kitchen cabinets for his casework. But he did a lot of research. And um, uh, under his leadership, Dr. Bennett was more outward looking and expanding and through diversification of um, the department. And uh, he was here until 1966, when he was recruited by uh, President Lyndon Johnson to come to Washington to head up the Office of Science and Technology. And at that time, Dr. Uh, Robert Heftenstall was named the interim director of the department uh, while Dr. Bennett was serving in uh, Washington. And Dr. Uh, we were having a party to welcome Dr. Bennett back in 1969, 68 or 69, and we got word that he had accepted a position as chancellor at New York University. So uh, he took that position and was there for several years. And then uh, Dr. Heftens, there was a search committee, and Dr. Uh, Heppenstahl was the interim chair, and he uh, uh, was named uh, director in 1969. Now, there's a picture I want to show you, if I can find it up here. John, come here, please. <laughs> I want to get this picture. How do I get that up on the screen? It is. Oh, it's up there. Okay. So there was a search committee, uh, and this was a rare photo of the secretary to the search committee for a pathology chairman leaving Dr. Ross's office after informing him that Dr. John Morrow said, no way, Jose. He was going to stay at Yale. Now, I don't know if you recognize this person, but he looks very much like David Blake to me. <laughs> So that was a, a bit of a fun thing. So since they could not, uh, didn't identify a chair at that time, uh, Dr. Uh, Yardley and Dr. Boycott were named 
as uh, directors of the department. Dr. Yardley was Vaxley Professor and Director from 1988 to 1993, and Dr. Boytnot was Professor and Deputy Director of the School of Medicine and Pathologist-in-Chief of the Hospital in 1988 to 1993. In 1993, Dr. Fred Sanfilippo was, came to the department, and Dr. Sanfilippo's name was Change. And he wanted to bring the department uh, up to the 20th century, and so uh, he, he insisted that the uh, Department of Laboratory Medicine be merged with the Department of Pathology at that time, which was just the autopsy, cyto, and, um, and surgical pathology uh, sections. So the department was merged with uh, uh, laboratory medicine, and it then became quite a large department. So Dr. Jackson then, uh, Dr. Sanfilippo, said he'd had enough of, of Hopkins after seven years, and he went off to Ohio State <laughs> University and was uh, director of the system, the Ohio State Health System, I understand, at that time. And that Dr. Jackson was the interim director uh, from 2000, and he was in that role for a year, and then he was named director in 2001. Uh, the faculty when I came consisted of uh, Dr. Bennett, Dr. Walter Sheldon was here, he was a professor, and that was unusual because at that time the departments were only allowed to have one professor, and that was the director of the department. But Dr. Sheldon, who had been in Atlanta, uh, was professor there, and so the, re the only reason he would come is if they kept him professor here. Dr. Rich was professor emeritus at that time, and he was still coming in in his neat three-piece suit that he wore all the time, summer, winter, whatever. And then we, at that time, we had five associate professors, five assistant professors, and one instructor. That was the size of the faculty. And the resident staff was the chief resident, and we had eight assistant residents and five interns. I had an interesting experience when I first came. I was, as I said, I was secretary to the chief resident. That's what I was hired to do. And I came in October, and I, was, uh, I did the chief resident's work until the following June. But I also took over the budgets in December when the budget person left and went to Texas to follow her boyfriend or some such thing. <laughs> and so, um, so the chief president at that time was James L. Frost, Jr. And that, he was in that position for his second year. And the first thing he gave me was a letter which I immediately wanted to change, which he took exception to. So we did it his way. And um, so after that, at that time, the, the support staff consisted of six secretaries and two technicians. That was the size of anatomic pathology at that time, very small. Then I want to talk a little bit about um, the renovations that we were asked to do to improve the, li uh, the lighting in the library. The library, as you know, is a beautiful room. Let's see if we can find a picture of the library. There. And. Um, you can see it has beautiful beamed ceilings. Well, when Dr. Bennett was here, he charged Dr. Gerald Spear to improve the lighting in the library. The lighting was very poor at that time. So 
what Dr. Spear wound up doing was putting in a dropped ceiling, a Celotex ceiling in the library. It was hideous. <laughs> and so after um, many years, Dr. Bennett wanted that changed. So we went in, back in, and tore down the uh, Celotex ceiling. Of course, if you look at these beams, they look like wood. They're not wood. They are plaster and painted to look like wood. It is a, a dying art in Baltimore. If you, if you go through Highland Town and Canton, places like that, you will see doors that look like wood but they're not. They are this painted uh, effect that they used at that time. And I don't think that there's anyone around Baltimore who's doing it anymore. But anyway, the, where uh, we had hung the ceiling, of course, there were holes that had been drilled in to the plaster, and we had to get, find this man and get him to come in and repair all the holes that had been drilled to hang that Celotex ceiling. And now it's restored to its, uh, the ceiling is restored to its original beauty. And then uh, in 1984, the library was dedicated to Dr. Ella Oppenheimer. And remains the Ellen, Ella Oppenheimer Library to this day. And Dr. Oppenheimer, uh, as I said earlier, was an associate professor in the department. Uh, they didn't name anyone uh, professors except uh, Dr. Sheldon, who came with that title. And um, Dr. Oppenheimer was responsible for the original indexing of diagnostic cases in the department. And she did it all manually. And we have with us today that I would like to introduce to you Dr. Oppenheimer's daughter, Dr. Patsy Perlman. Dr. Perlman, would you stand up? <laughs> and I think... Uh, <laughs> I think Dr. Dr. Perlman looks just like her mother. In fact, uh, Dr. Arthur Dannenberg once told me he was going down the steps in pathology and he met Patsy on her way up and he stopped and he said, oh, I thought I'd seen a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't he do that? <laughs> so the Oppenheimer Library is now uh, half the size that it was originally but we still have her picture and it's still dedicated uh, to her. So that's my history of uh, the department. Of course, it has now changed dramatically. And how many buildings are we in now, Dr. Jackson? 15? 14 or 15 buildings on the campus. Isn't that incredible? And the department has grown so much. I think we now have something like 1,400 staff members in the department, uh, let alone the faculty, which uh, now is 102 uh, tenure track faculty. Then we have research associates and other uh, types of faculty. And so the department has certainly grown over those years, but it is still the strongest department in the School of Medicine. And as Rich Brossie told you, it always has been, and I'm sure it will continue to be. Now, there are two things that have not changed in the years since 1961, and that is a lack of money and space. <laughs> <laughs> and it's going on today. <laughs> and the other thing that hasn't changed are the two elevators in the Department <laughs> of Pathology. They were there in the original building, and they are still going strong. And my uh, son-in-law happens to be uh, uh, in the elevator repair business, and he said, don't get rid of those elevators. They are the best ones in the, in the complex. 
So that's my uh, history of the department. It has been great, and I hope to see you all on uh, uh, July 12th when we can uh, say goodbye. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.